All right, some of you will remember this, my Kikusui 6100 that I did a lot of, uh, a lot of work on. You can see I've redone all the power supply section and everything. Um, I basically got this entire scope working except it wouldn't <laughs> make a picture on the front. So my best guess, I still don't have a hard conclusion, but my best guess is that the uh, high voltage, Let's see, where is it? Oh. Uh, the high voltage tripler, tri, tri, what anyway, I think it multiplies it by about 10 or something like that. Um, uh, this went bad. I did hear a pop, but it was a pop that I didn't recognize. I hadn't heard such a thing before. It was a, definitely a loud crack, like a high voltage crack, but it was very subdued. So I think it happened inside the potting material of this, uh, of this device. This is completely potted. Um, it could be that the tube is dead as well, but I don't think so because the filament lights up on it. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it has any breaks in the glass or anything. So I really needed a replacement for the, uh, uh, for this module here. Um, so I've been looking around, um, I have a module out of a, a, a Hewlett Packard scope, but I don't think it's completely compatible. So I didn't want to put it in here and destroy things. Um, so I did find, I did find a donor. Okay. So let me show you my donor. Okay. Here's my donor scope. <laughs> I got this for uh, $58. <laughs> Okay, so I think I paid $25 for the first scope, um, and uh, I had to put in another $58 to, uh, to get it working. And uh, what I did was I took every single part of this scope and I moved it over to the other scope. So now it's comp no, 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 it's completely working scope. So for 58 bucks, I got a, I got one that's completely working. Uh, so, so now my broken scope is my donor scope in case this one ever goes bad. Um, but anyway, I couldn't let the other one sit. I, I really wanted to look at this scope. I was fascinated by these five channels and, uh, um, I also had ideas of a particular video series I wanted to do, so we will, uh, maybe visit that too. So, um, yeah, it, uh, seems to work pretty good. Um, I, I don't, I don't find anything wrong with this scope. It's, it's in, it's in perfect condition. So, uh, what I want to do maybe today is to show you some of the features of this, of this scope. Um, kind of what I wanted to do when I bought that first one, which is um, it is a two-channel scope. So here's channel one. I can put channel two. So there's channel two. I can move my uh, scope probe down to uh, put down to channel two, and you can see it's down there. But it's of course it's not triggering. Um, and uh, there's also a channel three. Uh, which is down here. So let's uh, see what's the best way to do this. Let me uh, let me get a second scope probe. All right, I found a uh, another scope probe here, and we have two um, two calibrators: a one volt calibrator and a two hundred millivolt calibrator. So there you go. There's channel two. Uh, so channel two channel two is working fine. But uh, check this out, there's a channel three. So the channel three is down here. And we can turn on channel three. So there's the third channel. Now we've got a three channel scope, right? We've got channel one, we've got channel two. Now we've got channel three. And then the other thing we can do is we can say, okay, well, what type of triggering are we using? Well, triggering is over here. I have it set to internal triggering. Um, and on most scopes, that's as far as you go. But this scope, you can hit channel four, which is trigger view. All right, so let me, let me turn off, let's see, let me move, let me move channel three down here, I'm move channel two way down here. All right, so here, so this which just popped up here, this is trigger view. What it says is whatever is being sent to the trigger circuit, show it. So when I have it set to internal, 
it's going to show the same thing as up here. It's going to be a mirror image of it because that's, that's what's being sent. If I set it to line, then uh, what's being sent to the trigger is the 60 hertz, uh, 60 hertz line signal. Um, and if I use this BNC over here, this is external channel 4 input. So now I can input a separate channel into channel 4 which will be my trigger, and I can see it at the same time. So now I've got a four-channel scope. <laughs> then there's a connector down here, which is uh, the uh, B trigger. Okay, so you can have an A trigger, you can have a B trigger, and the B trigger can be internal or line or external. So you can have five things you can see. <laughs> it's just craziness. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Anyway, so four and five. Uh, channel three, channel two, yeah, it uh, it's pretty cool. It is sort of a five channel scope. It's definitely a three channel scope, with one channel being a little bit crippled. It's only got two settings, a 0.1 volt and a one volt, but it is a third channel. And if you're willing to do this weird view trigger thing, yeah, you get a fourth channel out of it. So I would call it a fourth channel scope with extra features. <laughs> Pretty nice. It does have delayed sweep. I was going to do a whole, I was going to do a whole video on delayed sweep, but I'll give you kind of a, a quick view of that. Um, we can go to A intensified by B and um, let's turn down the intensity here. You can see this is little uh, this little bit here that's intensified, right? What does that mean? Well, you trigger on the channel, and then you delay some amount. So this is setting the how long do you delay, and then you you draw this little bright line, <laughs> okay? And so you say I'm going I'm to put it right here. I'm going to put it so it's kind of right there on that on that falling edge, okay? And then you can hit this button. And you can um, you can see it. Let me move, there we go. Move everything up. So this is um, that little intensified section expanded. Okay. And if I change the delay, you can see it's changing here. It's changing down here too. So that's that is delayed sweep. That's what a delayed sweep was. Some people were confused when I showed a delay line in the oscilloscope that the, they thought the delay line was delayed sweep. No, it's not. Delayed sweep is exactly this. This this scope does not have a delay line in it. I cannot look at a, a trigger event in this scope. I'm not a, I'm not able to see before the trigger in this oscilloscope. I can see after the trigger delayed by a certain amount. I could go. I could go over here, I could go over here, I could look at other events. And if I don't want to see both at the same time, I can hit this button, I can look just at the delayed, just at the delayed portion. So that's what all these buttons do. Yeah, A delayed by B. Um, yeah, I think I need to do an oscilloscope series on how you use oscilloscopes and uh, do it in three parts. One all about scope probes, one all about analog oscilloscopes, and then one all about digital oscilloscopes. I think, I think those would be good series to do. Um, but I do have a working Kikasui 6100M, a COS 6100M. It's a really, really nice scope. It really, really is. It's very sharp, uh, really, really nice display. It, 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 it kind of feels like a Tektronics, although not quite. It's more like a Hitachi scope. I don't know if everybody was like cross-pollinating, um, but yeah, it feels like a Hitachi scope. Okay, well, I told you I would get, I would, I would not give up on that 6100 oscilloscope and I didn't. I found a donor. Unfortunately, the donor is better than the original unit, so uh, yeah, you'll have to bear with me. This is uh, this is how I solved the problem for fifty-eight dollars. <laughs>